Welcome to the Growth Zone with Christian Barsch. Today's topic is what will generate sustainable profits for investors? Well, that's a good challenging question. Do you really think that everything will be providing sustainable profits? Well, um, there's so much stuff that being offered to people where they believe, oh, they'll be rich. It's the so-called thing where they're telling everybody you have to become a speaker or book author or you have to do events or you have to uh, be a real estate um, agent or sell cars or go to a big corporate and work there and get a good job. You have to go to university or study, learn well. Or you have to do all kind of crazy other stuff. Be an artist or best ballet performer and all, all these different things. Reality is um, generating sustainable profits is a challenge. And even for investors even more. Because you have to find things that are able to survive bad times. And I'm meaning really times where the economies are going in circles are moving like a storm and falling apart at any time. And that's not that easy to find. So you have to have something that is recession proof. Of course, what everybody usually would say would be certain jobs or things that we always need. The thing is, not all these kind of jobs or businesses are so highly profitable and you can't scale them but they'll always be needed. Like for instance, everybody always needs to have food. Everybody needs to go to the toilet. Some people obviously think they need to buy boxes and crates of toilet paper. Unfortunately, at the beginning, of course, all these companies who make toilet paper, they're going to be generating huge profits because they are selling off their stock and they can't even produce enough. But one day, everybody will have had enough toilet paper to last them for maybe the next two, three, four, five years. The thing is, in those two, three, four, five years, the production will not be fully operational because we don't need to buy that much. Everybody's got so much toilet paper that it's coming out of their ears. So only the people who haven't bought that much toilet paper will need toilet paper. So. The curve would be like an explosive curve where these manufacturers of toilet paper have to invest and increase their production facilities. They change the facilities, produce more paper, more paper, more paper, and suddenly, boom, nobody wants the paper. And then the toilet paper is then in warehouses and are stuffed to the top but not leaving because everybody has enough toilet paper and doesn't want to buy anymore because the crisis has passed or whatever. So investing, for instance, in companies who do toilet paper wouldn't be sustainable. Yes, you could say, yep, yeah, everybody always needs it, but um, when you see what's happening at the moment, it's, it's not always very intelligent what's happening. But yes, everybody needs to go to the toilet after a while. Nevertheless, yeah, there are other things. But what's sustainable? Sustainable would be, for instance, property. Investing in property in profitable properties. But do you, does it mean you're going to invest in villas? Of course, a villa will pay you more rent than a flat. On the other hand, if you lose the tenant of the villa because his company goes bust, it'll take some time until you find a new tenants. The same thing is with, well, with commercial buildings. At the moment, you see so many retailers uh, defaulting, especially as well with all these curfews happening, with as well more and more people going into the internet, um, retailers are closing down. And when you look at it, when you see all these different properties that are empty, you're thinking, okay, mm, might take maybe half a year till somebody else moves in. Then it's a year past, two years, suddenly you see the next space next to it empty and the next and the next. And eventually you have a huge commercial space that's empty. But they're not going down with their rent price. The, the rental prices 
uh, the rental fees are still far too high and retail just can't survive at that cost because of course competition has changed it's all online so it means retail moves into a virtual retail e-commerce exactly everybody's in online and what do the commercial operators do then with property that's empty of course you'd say well let's get companies in who sell food because everybody needs food i can ho have home delivered food as well i can order my vegetables i can order milk and beer and everything everything i need to do a barbecue everything i can home order why do i need to go to stores yeah and that's what's happening for many retailers it's becoming a challenge and that's definitely not an area where you'll be generating sustainable profits if the businesses are not fast enough to adapt because it doesn't just mean having a e-commerce shop or something online you have to have online marketing much more you have to fight against a online community because all your shopping is happening online all the shoppers are moving online why invest in ads in billboards or in tube lines that people are not using if your ad is running in the, in the in the tube or in buses well who's going to see it if everybody is usually the whole day stuck at home nobody's going to see it it's all online the thing is online is going to become more expensive and in certain platforms you can't advertise because either it's not available or people are not in there or people are maybe moving to the next place and when people are stuck at home all day they start consuming content in a different way they start as well moving out because maybe they fed up of seeing all the negative news and everything and on all the garbage that people are posting that are bored at home and eventually noticing that they can't even focus on the work because it's just distracting them that they eventually make a decision and to fully leave that platform then that's something that's going to affect these kind of businesses and you as an investor this will make much more difficult for you to even see how can my investment even survive such difficult times well yes investing into rental homes and that that's something you can do that's possible but not every area offers the right kind of facilities the right buildings to even convert maybe there's even nothing even to buy there because it's all already been sold and that maybe the prices are too high and the rental that you get out it'll take too long for you to get the money back in of course the different style is how you can go and invest your money into properties and that and reinvest it and build it out and, and do all these things that's something that's always really interesting because it looks very in certain ways you can say it's similar to stock stock option trading but it does have a difference a substantial difference it is longer lasting if you do it in the right way but you shouldn't be investing it in places that are going to be volatile highly volatile for instance places like cyprus i wouldn't be investing there my money into properties there um, because in these places you don't have industry you don't have high tech that is going to help you get those tenants are going to pay high high fees and you say yeah but they have low product manufacturing build construction costs and in the end it'll be be better the thing is these these regions are highly volatile they are regions that don't offer necessarily in today's times of high volatility whether it's these viruses and other things wars conflicts and anything else um instability in that that's places you don't want to invest you have to focus in places where you are able to secure money and the, the, the crazy thing about it is turkey for instance used to be a very good place to invest into property yeah you got good property you got lots of europeans that were staying there over the summer and enjoying the beautiful time and that many retired people who buy and stay there and come every time and commercial lives quite well there 
in the good times. Things have changed. Of course, there's volatility inside, volatility outside, and in particular as well, of course, the war in neighboring Syria. So that's something that affects as well real estate. That's something you have to always look as well when you're investing. What's good, what's not good. Look at, at the United Kingdom, for instance. You've got Brexit coming. We've got all this virus stuff and all these insecurities. Different places are deciding and even talking about um, moving out of the United Kingdom. Scotland, for instance, just thinking, okay, what if we leave? And what happens this and what happens that? Northern Ireland, even Ireland's situation. It's all a difficulty in itself, but in comparison to places like Turkey and, and uh, Cyprus, the United Kingdom offers quite an opportunity. Brexit is not that bad when you look at it, because whether Brexit comes or doesn't come, on which form it comes. If you are a property investor, you have chances to do things. If you are investing in venture capital, in businesses that produce products, services, software, or any kind of things, even solutions for banking and trading and other things, you'll always have opportunities to um, make gains. But if you've got a place of in total instability, where there's military conflicts, where there are extreme bad weathers that people are having damages where property is being lost on a regular scale and being highly volatile that's where you don't want to invest so for instance a friend of mine uh, john stoko he invests in properties in wales wow it's, it's actually quite interesting because a few years ago I, th uh, I visited him and we went to to an event in wales and it was really funny because uh, last time i'd been to wales was as a kid i used to go on holidays with my parents sometimes to different places in wales uh, as well to cornwall southern england and as well to scotland and that and all around the united kingdom whether it's wales england scotland northern ireland there are different opportunities depending on what you are looking for and there's lots of opportunities it's just you have to first before you invest in anything and it doesn't matter whether it's property, stocks, venture capital, mutual funds, anything. You have to inform yourself first properly. Educate yourself so that you know what you are getting yourself into. That's when people don't do that. That's when they actively really lose money. And even you say, okay, but I can get my money back. Yeah, but if you don't get any interest, you still lose money because uh, the devaluation of currencies is everywhere whether it's the euro whether it's the dollar whether it's the pound it doesn't matter but if you invest in something that is able to grow and that's like with properties or companies that are producing products producing services developing new products whether they are online products software cloud source systems and other things that's where you want to be and you have to be in the right place yeah it's it's like, for instance, as if you're saying, okay, I could, of course, go and invest property in Toronto and Canada. I could go into Ottawa. I could go into other places. Um, yeah, I could go even and invest property in uh, Wellington, uh, whether it's Wellington in New Zealand, Wellington in Florida, or Wellington in the United Kingdom, or Palm Beach doesn't matter or Texas go somewhere in Texas invested there's everywhere that there'll always be pros and cons in what you are investing the key thing looking at how these things can develop what the, are the ups and the downs and where can you manage to secure that your sustainable profits become a growing investment value that's where you have to really look at it and think about it whether it is really going to be profitable and of course don't forget there are volatilities out there in anything that you invest there will always be high risks and even if you say okay I buy mutual funds or I buy funds that have inv huge investment portfolios in different kinds of company shares if the stock market is going down the drain it doesn't matter it'll take your stocks or it'll take your funds down and your investment will go and being devalued 
your money will go down the drain as well. So it doesn't matter. But if you invest in the right way, in the right kind of things, you can at least limit your risks. Yes, that's actually what you should be doing when you are considering and what you're investing, how you're going to do your risk management, understanding where are the risks and the potentials, what can you win, and as well, what's the best worst situation and what be the ideal situation somewhere in the middle. And that's what concludes this podcast that is relating to what will generate sustainable profits for investors. This was The Growth Zone with Christian Bartsch.